Hi folks, welcome to the status for 6 November 2022. Forgive me, I'm still under the weather. I've been sick for almost a week now, but it's milder than it was before. So I'm not working at full capacity. What I've been doing in this time is trying to solve a mystery involving crystals. As you recall, we used a little Arduino Uno to run our the stepper motors for our experiments. And we had an error of 10%. And that error came out of the fact that the crystal, that the, the, the drivers weren't driving at the right frequency, and that came down that our crystals were way off. Okay, and I can't understand how that could happen at the beginning. So then I started, you know, researching because ultimately what I need to do is we are going to be using and developing our own printed circuit boards with our own crystals and our own microprocessors. And I was looking at the data sheet for the SAM 3X controller, this is the microprocessor we're going to use. And their specifications of how you set up the crystal kind of like are like not making any sense to me. Okay, they're saying you have to match the C load of the crystal that you get from the crystal specification. Okay, but when you read other documentation, they say when you do that, you end up moving the overtone on top of the fundamental. And that is contradictory to what I think we really need to do. And, uh, and even then, when I go into this documentation, they don't really say, well, what happens if your, your, these capacitors are off? How off are you going to be with your crystal? There's no documentation to that. They just say match it. And there's no, like, okay, here's how far you're going to be off if you don't match it exactly. Okay, and even in spite of that, they say in the documentation that you need a load capacitance between 12.5 and 17.5. Okay, so I looked for 12 megahertz crystals on DigiKey with the appropriate precision that I'm looking for, and I can get 12 and 18. I can't get anything in between. So don't worry. I think I don't think this is the way to go anyway. Uh, I think we don't want to match our load capacitance, but we're going to verify that experimentally uh, with this. Um, and then, okay, this is just the data sheet for the uh, crystal oscillator. This was the way I, I'm going to go, was going to go is instead of me trying to sit there and come up and figure out what the capacitor should be, is just go buy a pre-canned oscillator that's already been set up and all, everything's been done and it's guaranteed, you know, with a certain parts per million that I'm looking for, 10% or 10 parts per million. Okay, but these are $2.75 a piece and they can only go up to 3.63 volts. So there's certain applications we want to use 5 volt logic so we can get the full high frequency stuff out of it. So there's certain synthesizers. And their, their crystals, the crystals, they look like the same exact package. That's what I'm going for. Same exact package. So that if I can want to swap out a crystal, I can swap out a crystal for an oscillator because they have the same pinouts. Uh, that way there I can update something without having to go redo all the printed circuit boards. So um, now the problem that I was, if you go onto Wiki and you look up crystal oscillator, they use the electrical model of the crystal as an LCR circuit. And that's fine. But I've always been told that this is notional. Right here. This is equivalent. 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 It's more, it's less than equivalent, it's only notional. Excuse me. And here that they did, they would have put it right into a Laplace transfer. I'm like, you can't do this. You can't use this. Okay, because if you go later on down in the book, they say the reason for the use of the crystals is the high Q factor. Typically a Q of a quartz oscillator ranges from uh, you know, 10,000 to 10 million compared to 100 for an LC oscillator. Okay, so why are we wasting time with the Z transform of an LCR, uh, an LC oscillator when that's not really what a crystal is? This is just notional. Okay, and you know, but this basically says that a crystal can operate in a series resonant and a parallel resonance mode. Okay, and then I looked into the Pierce oscillator, and it's like what they're telling me here is like it is a derivative of the Cole Pitts oscillator. No, it is not. That is a bogus statement. And I think that happened because these two circuits are right next to each other in the book. As a matter of fact, this is so bad um, that we I, that I've decided that I need to start another site just to correct electrical engineering stuff that's gone off the rails. Okay, a Pierce oscillator is not a derivative of a cold pits oscillator. Okay, and you can see that if you slide down on this on a page, the person here is the article needs attention from an expert in electronics. 
The problem is the description is confused about the operation of the circuit and the diagrams do not show the crucial phase lag components or the need for a high gain amplifier, blah, 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 blah. And I think that's the problem is that the Colpitts oscillator and the Pierce oscillator are always appeared side by side in the textbooks and they've got the two confused together. And we need to cir we're, we're circus that up because now I can show you the difference between and we're going to get this is this what I'm showing you is just to work up to a full video on this topic or maybe a couple of videos on this topic. Okay, so the, like stuff is broken everywhere I look, and you look at my textbook. I went back to look at my textbook and look, this is definitely a Pierce oscillator, and they're calling it a Colpitts oscillator. Okay, as it just this shows you the confusion in the books. Okay, uh, and because these capacitors here are not there for phase, but we'll talk about that later once I verify experimentally. But the other thing that's funny here is they show this circuit here. Okay, and you know they they said you know well, for the crystal control oscillator shown in figure with a 32 kilohertz coarse crystal is used determine the oscillator frequency. Okay, the answer is well if it's being run by the crystal, obviously the answer is 32 kilohertz. But here's where Bob Justinti would get an F on the test, because my answer would be zero. Can anybody out there, here's a little challenge question for everybody, can anybody out there explain why Justinti is right that this would give zero frequency? We'll answer that next week, if I remember to do that. If I forget to it, remind me and I'll explain why this should have zero hertz. This is how bad these textbooks are. And you can tell, because they're using a different symbol for an enhancement mode MOSFET than they are up here and they're using a different symbol for a crystal that they've obviously cut and pasted from another book but never never ever bothered to validate what how it did or didn't work so anyway so what I did I got fed up with all this stuff all this confusing stuff in all the books and all the online and I put a precision 10 killer uh, sorry 10 megahertz crystal in a little metal box and with some BNC cables and I hooked it up to my trusty rusty uh, Siglent spectrum analyzer which also has a VNA capability and what a bing bada boom and this is like oh I know exactly what's going on here okay here is your parallel I'm sorry your series resonant node here's your parallel resonance node and these are your what they're gonna say is overtones okay but that's not the important point if I expand what I'm gonna do now is expand the oh and it shows that the series resonant node is at the designed frequency of the crystal and here you go this is what I was saying you can move this node by changing the capacitance because this this beats against the capacitance that you add to the crystal this is your through resonance here this shouldn't be affected very much by the capacitance you add externally okay um, so anyway um, the, but the more interesting thing is the next band when I expand it out and show you that because of that parallel capacitance this thing has a high pass effect and that's critical that that explains to me why the coal pits needs the other capacitors okay but we'll get to that next week because what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new site just for correcting stupid electrical engineering things that have nothing to do with ethereal mechanics. Uh, it's just the crap that's been going on. It's like, yeah, Nobel Prize for quantum entanglement. Yeah, sure, right. Um, but what I'd like, okay, is if anybody can come up with a name for this new site. I was thinking of Acme Engineering, you know, kind of a nod to the Roadrunner series, but that was already taken. So if you can come up with a, uh, somebody can make uh, suggestions for a possible name for this new site. Um, I was even thinking about Acme Starship, you know, Acme Rocket Company. I don't know, but it really should be something about electronics. Um, anyway, that's all I have for now. I will complete this research. I got more measurements to do um, using oscilloscopes and uh, pulse generators to, to ferret out the fundamental workings of the crystals so that I can give everybody, I can give the world better models and the crap that they're seeing out there that makes no sense and it's all confused. Sorry to waste time on this, but I need to be able to design our frequency references for the upcoming ethereal mechanics experiments. I need to be able to design those references and know that I'm going to get exactly what I need to get from them. 
And as a side benefit, if I can educate the rest of the world to show them you know, the flaws that have creeped into engineering, well, all the better for everybody. Anyway, catch you next week. Bye-bye.